questions. Professor Xu Mei Sun. Uh, this, uh, my pronunciation, pronunciation is right? It's okay. perfect. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. She is a principal scientist, deputy executive director, and head of the communications and network department at the Institute of Infocom Research, Singapore. She also belongs to the Singapore Institute of Technology and an adjunct appointment with the National University of Singapore as a professor. She is editor-in-chief of the IEEE Open Journal of Vehicular Technology and is a distinguished speaker of the IEEE Vehicular Technology Society. She is contributing in many other important IEEE activities. She is also the chairperson of Special 5G Strategy Task Force and Telecommunication Standards Advisory Committee of Infocom Media Development Authority, Singapore. Okay, could you start your presentation? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your very nice introduction. Um, I would need your permission to share my screen. Wait a minute. Please share. Okay. Okay, please continue presentation. Yes. Are you able to see the screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity to share some of the work that we are doing in Singapore and also some of the thoughts that we are uh, putting in uh, when we are starting the 60 research. So my presentation will cover a few aspects uh, when we move from 5G to 60, including the driving applications, enabling technologies, and also uh, the uh, research aspects and the standardization aspects. Um, all right. Yeah, so uh, to start the uh, presentation, I would like to share with you very, very quickly our survey on the megatrends when we move to 2030. Um, so we look at a few predictions by the uh, research firms and also the academic um, schools, including like DNL, GL, uh, on the technology outlook 2030, the uh, Forest and Suliwan's um, study on the global megatrends 2030, and also the MIT Sloan Management Review. And when we look at all these predicted megatrends for the next 10 years, we can see that a common theme will be hyperconnectivity, artificial intelligence of everything. And of course, in particular, some of the um, moving new trends when we look at this hyperconnectivity will be uh, pervasive connectivity for everyone, everything. And also when we move from the current 2020 to 2030, uh, we are also moving from industry 4.0 to industry 5.0 and also moving into a zero latency world. So with this, of course, you know, the much uh, talked about uh, word, I mean, theme word metaverse will also form an integrated part of this new trend. When we look at Metaverse, we are looking at a new platform to integrate the digital world and the uh, practical physical world. Instead of just looking at the bars of uh, you know, Facebook, of the social media. So we take it uh, as a general platform, of course. And uh, with this new mega trends for the next 10 years, uh, it is worth looking at also the shifting trends, shifting evolution of the cellular technologies when we move from uh, 5G to 6G. So when we look at the 
um, cellular evolution from the first generation to fifth generation, we have, um, of course, enabled uh, mega shifts in terms of the network capabilities from, uh, you know, the very core voice communication to the current internet of things, and also the connectivity speed of tens of gigabits per second. And at the same time, when we support the internet of things with mission critical operations, we have also put in the uh, latency requirement in the uh, 5G performance specification. And when we look at another trend or shift in the design of the cellular technologies, we can also see a very interesting shift from the early generations of people-centric and data-centric design to the fifth generation of both connecting people and also connecting things, and also to connect some of the mission-critical things. We have also put on top of the data rates, also the latency requirements. So when we move from 5G to 6G to realize the mega trends of hyper connectivity, hyper connectivity of everything, and also artificial intelligence of everything. So what are we going to expect in 6G? So to summarize and also to align uh, our earlier uh, keynote speakers presentation, we can summarize the trend in 6G will be the three worlds convergence. The three worlds will be physical, virtual, and human worlds. And of course, to support this uh, real-time convergence of the three worlds, on top of the data rate and the latency support, the synchronization support across the physical things, human, and also the digital representation in the virtual worlds, the avatars of the things and the people will be a very critical performance spec specification required in 6G. So this is our current understanding about the 6G performance. And certainly that is built based on what we are facing in terms of deploying 5G. And also when we move to more support of this uh, uh, convergence of the three worlds. So with that, I would like to also share with you some of the reality check that has been experienced by us in uh, pushing the 5G applications, in, especially in Singapore. So we know that for 5G, it is invasion to uh, be the enabling technology to connect people and things. And uh, on top of that, be the enabling te uh, technology to uh, digital transform all the industry verticals. We, we know these uh, famous triangle technologies for 5G. So with that, it has also come forward with the very demanding performance indicators or the KPIs. We can see that we have indeed very aggressive KPIs in 5G already. So with this very aggressive KPIs, we are to a large extent able to support the 60 vision, even the three walls of um, convergence. However, there is a catch that may uh, not have been looked into fully when we look at the 5G uh, specification. That is most of these KPIs may have been focusing by and large only the individual sessions or individual applications. And then when we look at the design and support multiple operations, multiple sessions together in the network, especially, especially in the localized areas, then supporting these concurrent and simultaneous KPIs will become a huge challenge for us to overcome in 5G. So uh, I'd like to uh, also uh, showcase these challenges by some of the uh, Singapore's deployment. For Singapore, we are focusing on uh, deploying 5G in a few lead verticals, including the next generation maritime and offshore operations, the urban mobility, industry 4.0, and smart estate. And of course, on top of the other digital applications to connect 
to support the consumer and also to support the digital government and smart nation. However, if you look at uh, these different industry verticals, we can also see some of the common use case or common applications. For example, largely deploy autonomous and unmanned uh, systems like AG base, including container lorry unmanned and autonomously operating at the port, deploying of drones to support safety surveillance and also digital twin operations and also like robotics and automation in industry 4.0 and uh, smart traffic monitoring, energy mo monitoring and so on. So what are the issues when we uh, support all these different applications in the various industry verticals? This will be related to the challenging wireless hostile environment that we experience in these different operations and at the same time, supporting these concurrent and simultaneous services that are demanding all these KPIs. For example, for 5G in marine time, we have identified nine uh, or 10 use cases so as to achieve the five dimensions of the performance enhancement in marine time operation that will involve deploying autonomous vessels, search and rescue, ship shore communications, drones, robots, unmanned vehicles, V2X, AR operations for maintenance, remote operation, data voice communication so as to uh, enable us for the autonomous pilotage, piloting operation for the ships coming into the shore, leaving the shore and also real-time data and AI, so as for us to support this real-time and zero latency digital twin operation for the port operations. However, if we look at this environment, it is super challenging for wireless because of the metal containers, the metallic structure of the ships, and also the high capacity operation at the port area. So. We need to support in order to realize this vision or mission. We need to support massive connectivity at the port and also the near port sea areas with high data rate, with high capacity, URLC, and also to support the operation of the unmanned autonomous forklift trucks, vehicles. We will need high precision localization up to centimeter level. At the same time, with this hostile environment for wireless communications, and also with this dynamically changing environments, it is really still a long way for us to go in order to realize all these visions together. And at the same time, we do see also the need of these uh, three dimensional communications to integrate the terrestrial, non-terrestrial by putting in whether, whether it is the HAPS communication platform or the satellite or even the drone communication network will still remain to be a challenging task for us to achieve. And Another application we are driving is actually automation in the uh, smart construction area by deploying robots, both built and uh, legged robots and also drones. So as for us to build digital twin and also to have the remote and real time supervision and remote operations so as to increase the efficiency and also reduce the need for deploying a lot of human operators on the uh, challenging construction sites. And of course, this also presents a similar challenge, maybe less challenging than the port operations, but still, you know, the demanding communications, the demanding KPIs, and in the dynamically changing and also wireless hostile channel and uh, network. So, 
Industry 4.0 has been identified and commonly agreed as a key application for 5G. And for 5G in the advanced manufacturing to realize Industry 4.0, we require high data rate, high capacity, and URLC in the localized manufacturing floor, as well as on the move to supply the warehouse and the uh, supply chain operations. And to some extent, we will need to support also this end-to-end -end track and trace by deploying, for example, the distributed ledger technologies as well. And then when we look at the deployment, we face a similar challenge of supporting all these demanding KPIs under one local area and the wide area of operations in the dynamically changing and also wireless hostel channel and also for the network operations. So I hope I'm able to have this. Uh, yes, so this is just showing the measurement that we have performed in the um, uh, in a few low band and mid band channels in the model factory environment that we set up in ASTAR. As you can see that the environment and the channel are really dynamically changing. And uh, at some time, and for some of the loca locations, the channel condition can go below certain extent for us to sustain the demanding KPIs in the environment. So this is a, um, um, this model factory is actually uh, almost same as a real factory environment. And also we have shown the measurement points that we have a place to collect all this measurement data. So with that, we I would like to also share with you another ap application that we are putting in 5G to support the energy sustainability by integrating the renewable energy into a virtual power plant. So to cut the story short, in such a uh, setup, we will need two-way wireless communications to support timely sensing of and also the timely um, uh, presentation of the distributed energy resources, including the batteries and also the solar panels, wind turbines. And at the same time, we will need to have the real-time control of the operations of all these distributed energy resources. So in summary, the KPIs for these two-way um, communications will be for both uplink and downlink, we will need URLC with short packet transmission with reliability, latency, and also availability. And at the same time, to operate this renewable energy as a critical infrastructure, we will need to support also the network resilience, the network security, and also the data auditability because we involve the energy transactions. So integrating the distributed ledger kind of technologies will be another key requirement for the network design. So how do we buffer and also accommodate the additional overhead in terms of latency and also the transmission will be key challenges for us to address. And uh, due to this scarcity of the wireless spectrum, it is ideally we coexist this mission critical transmission, the URLC transmission with the public network operations. So how do we coexist and guarantee these mission critical communications in this challenging environment and at the same time guarantee the performance even when the network is busy, is congested, will be a key challenge for us to address. And of course, when we move to 6G to further push the curve and uh, realize these uh, three worlds of convergence, we can see that there are many promising technologies for us to tap on to further develop. And also there are even more demanding KPIs for us to fulfill. And in particular, as I highlight in my earlier presentation, uh, network synchronization will be one key performance indicator that we will need to put in the 6G specification because the 
worlds of convergence, need us to have the common time reference with high precision. So, you know, uh, we, uh, I would like to also point to one of the specifications shared earlier by Professor uh, Marin Daba in his presentation, that for this network synchronization, we will need to look at two aspects. One aspect is the low jitter in, in terms of sub milliseconds level and also, excuse me, in terms of the uh, plus minus 10 nanoseconds of jitter while sub milliseconds level of synchronization accuracy across all the end nodes, all the wireless terminals in the network. So this will be one interesting problem for us to tackle on top of the data rate, reliability, latency specification. So what will be the promising enabling technologies? I think our earlier presentation have already shared many of them and also shared many exciting developments. Uh, I'd like to also share our view in terms of um, technology development and also research. So we summarize them into these five aspects. The first aspect is to support more machine as one dominant user, especially with dense deployment. And many of them will be asking for URLC support with this high precision network synchronization requirement. So we believe we will need to relook at the multiple access technologies with better agility, better, better flexibility, supporting high precision wireless time sensitive network, and also int integrate multiple functions into the same radio onto the same spectrum by converging the sensing, communications, computing, and control in the design. And one particular example will be the radar comms co-design on the same system and also same, same spectrum. Certainly, we will need to look at the architecture evolution and also the antenna technologies when we support the machine operations as one dominant user in the network. So another aspect we think will be important for us to incorporate in the 6G to fulfill the performance will be the Agile and software defined everything which will become a necessity. So this is going to be on top of the much researched and developed software-defined radio, software-defined network, and also software-defined environment, including the incorporation of the large intelligence surface. On top of that, to support this software-defined everything, we believe we will need to relook at how do we innovate in supporting this heterogeneous spectrum access and also heterogeneous night uh, spectrum management and uh, an open network set up. Certainly, to support many of these operations in 60 to convert the three walls, privacy and security and resilience will have to be warranted in the network. So in terms of some of the important technologies, we believe design security for machine communications and integrate the design of security with communications and computing to support the privacy preservation to guarantee the security and resilience will be important. And certainly for many researchers, you know, they have already started looking at quantum security and beyond quantum security in 60 and beyond 60. And certainly sustainability, when we look at 6C design in terms of network operation, in terms of energy efficiency, will have to become a baseline, especially when we look at incorporating AI to drive the performance in all the layers of the network in 6G. So with that, I would also quickly share some of the ongoing work that we are doing at um, S2R or my institute. In particular, I would like to share uh, radar communications co-design, heterogeneous spectrum access, and also AI for performance uh, enhancement in uh, the network. So joint radar communications have been motivated 
because of the scarcity of the uh, spectrum and also because of the operation and the circuit design in the systems. And of course, it is also a special example of this much hot uh, research topic of integrated sensing and communications in 6G. So the aim is really for us to re realize uh, in one system and one shared spectrum of multiple functions. And here we are talking about sensing by radar communication, radar, radar sensing. Uh, on top of the communication functions. So one of the use case that uh, I'm uh, illustrating here is, you know, in the uh, vehicle and the transportation environment, if we have the V2X communication sessions already supported for quick exchange of information between vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to pedestrian, and also vehicle to infrastructure. So, it is really going to benefit the safety of the operations, the transportation, if we are able to enable radar sensing functions on top of the V2X signals. And certainly if we have V2, uh, V2V vehicle radar operations already, if we are able to embed uh, communication signals for quick exchange of the um, transportation information among the vehicular users, that is also going to give us for the benefits for the road users. And then of course, this is also motivated by the common modules in the radar functions and also communication functions, certainly by enabling the radar and the communication functions onto the same circuit, we are able to save the circuit complexity and also hope, hopefully save the energy consumption of the system as well. So, the quest, the option will be a few folds, at least for now. The first option of the joint radar communication design will be to reuse the communication waveforms for radar sensing. And then the next natural second option will be to use the radar waveform for communications. But both waveforms will be, as a dual use case, are not optimized for the other byproduct function. So to address this issue, there is also this third option to use dedicated radar waveform for radar sensing and dedicated communication waveform for communication, but timeshare depending on the sensing and the communication requirements. So some of the performance requirements that we will have to fulfill by such a joint radar communication system, of course, the first is for communications, especially in such a uh, safety critical operations for transportation, we will need to fulfill URLC for communications and also to support high rate for, high, uh, for other applications, for example, for the electrical vehicle management, especially for the battery uh, monitoring maintenance and so on. We will need high data rate exchange when it is going for the high um, speed charging. Radar uh, sensing will have to fulfill the performance requirement of high resolution, multi-target detection with sub-meter level of localization accuracy and also sub-meter per second level of speed detection so that we are able to support the safety operations. And of course, this is a safety critical operation here. So, uh, the safety management in the design will be critical in terms of anti-jamming, anti-spoofing, and so on. So how are we doing in some of the current uh, systems? Uh, showing here is actually one of the design uh, use case that we have um, uh, done a few years back by making use of the 11AD reform. Um, you may know that uh, 11AD is a Wi-Fi standard that is uh, making use of the 60 gigahertz millimeter wave band for uh, short range, but very high speed uh, data exchange and data communication. So it is designed to support gigabits per second communication uh, requirements. So what we have done is um, reusing this uh, communication waveform to support radar functions. And uh, 
shown here are the performance of the radar sensing uh, while we are transferring the communication signals to support the gigabits uh, per second of um, uh, transmission. So the blue curve is showing the ranging accuracy. And since this is a reflected waveform, we are looking at really the very low SNR um, our working region that we can see that at the minus 25 dB of SNR, we are able to achieve a centimeter level of uh, ranging accuracy. And at the same SNR, we are able to also achieve a submeter per second um, level of speed detection accuracy. So indeed, the performance requirement is achievable. Is supportable. So what will be the um, new challenges for us to address when we move to such an application scenario? So we are looking at making use of the 5G uh, communication waveform to support a dual function of radar sensing. And uh, to make it into a system, we will need to address a few interferences. The first interference will be lying with the full duplex operation because we are making use the, of the reflected 5G signals for the target detection and also the speed estimation. And at the same time, we will need to also address the multi-system interference, uh, the multi radar comms interference mitigation. And certainly for high accuracy, we will need to address the mitigation of the Doppler effects in terms of the intercarrier interference. And of course, that disadvantage can be turned into an advantage when we look at actually the speed, optim uh, speed estimation uh, accuracy in the, 6G, in the 5G standard waveform as well. And at the same time, we are also looking at the new optimized waveform design in 6G to support the joint radar comms um, performance requirement. Uh, for example, the post OFDM waveform in terms of uh, OTFS, OTSM, or maybe some other new waveforms that is able to still give us the advantage of uh, simplicity when we look at the communication system design and at the same time, giving us this benefit of uh, dual function support of radar sensing. Certainly, um, you know, going into the higher band, such as millimeter wave, sub terahertz band, will give us advantage in terms of the radar sensing. However, there is also this challenge of um, our communication requirements, especially when we look at the pervasive connectivity and the coverage performance requirement. Beamforming design will be remaining a, a interesting talent for us to address, especially when we look at uh, messy MIMO uh, systems. How are we going to design the multiple beams to support communication target and also to support the radar targets um, with different performance requirement and certainly anti jamming will be important for us to address. And more importantly, the protocol aspect in such a joint radar communication design in 60 systems. So um, next, I'm going to quickly share actually uh, uh, AGEL software defined um, spectrum aggregation, which is motivated by the problem of this uh, spectrum um, scarcity and also the spectrum segmentation that we have been experiencing over the last um, decades. And we are going to continue having this problem because while we go to acquire new spectrums, we are also continuously refarming the legacy system spectrum so as to integrate them together, operate them and manage, manage them together. So it will come to the question that how are we going to come with a more agile and also lean system so that we are able to uh, support this uh, spectrum aggregation and management? Um, so 
If we have a lean system, certainly we are able to address the system complexity. So what we are um, moving to address this um, software defined agile spectrum aggregation is to move from the traditional filter bank kind of a design architecture to a single wide band um, conversion uh, architecture. So uh, this is illustrating our traditional filter bank kind of a design architecture that different spectrum we will have to implement different uh, RF front end and then followed by the protocol engine. And uh, whenever we have new spectrum, we will have to incorporate the um, corresponding filter bank. So there is going to be this bulky uh, hardware that we will need to build, even if we are moving a lot in the advancement of the semiconductor in terms of the packaging technologies. However, if we are able to come up with a new architecture that is able to make use of one single RF chain and also the analog to digital conversion chain so that we are able to have a flexible aggregation and also single protocol engine to manage the aggregation and also manage the decoding um, of the uh, incoming signals. So certainly the whole RF circuit or the whole system will be made much simpler. And accordingly, the cost of the system hopefully will be reduced as well. And uh, of course, another important aspect is if we have this single chain, uh, how are we able to also make it agile and um, flexible that we are able to reconfigure the bands, the spectrum that we can aggregate over the over the fly over the air so uh, would this be possible at all so this is just sharing that you know uh, we hope to achieve this universal structure with one single down conversion chain and we want it to be software defined and also reconfigurable with some code specification then we are able to um, to change from different from one side of the carrier to another side of the carrier to aggregate. And uh, with this, we can support multiple com combinations of the non-contiguous spectrums. And at the same time, we want it to maintain a low cost. So how are we able to manage the sampling frequencies when we convert from the analog signals to the digital signals? And uh, of course, Agility means that we want it to support both the regulated and also unlicensed spectrum. So I, I would like to share with you our current development that this idea is doable, is uh, also able to achieve a good level of um, a signal um, quality in the, in the uh, hardware systems. And as you can see, this is uh, actually just one snapshot of the hardware setup that we built in the lab. And this is showing actually the um, integrated setup that we have a hook up the um, layer one hardware with uh, also the open air interface particle stack, as well as the open 5GS core network modules so that we are able to build end-to-end uh, -end application demo from one, uh, you know, multiple uh, terminals operating at different carriers at 3.6 gigahertz and uh, 5.2 gigahertz respectively. And then we are able to support concurrent video conference sections through this integrated demo setup. And of course, there is a lot more to go, uh, including uh, further enhancing the deep learning module so as for us to uh, further mitigate the uh, non-ideal hardware uh, non-linearities that we uh, incorporate uh, we, we experience in the system so there are still a lot more to go so next I'm going to quickly share uh, the AI research I think we foresee that AI will become an important player uh, in 6G and of course uh, different uh, layers in the network and also different parts of the network, um, we expect AI to play a very active role. And uh, of course, the challenge for us to address will remain including 
like interpretability of AI so as to be able to control the AI modules for us in order to achieve a robust performance. And of course, the standardization aspect to support the AI integration in the different layers of the network will remain important for us to address. And uh, so um, quickly sharing with you some of the aspects that we are building, for example, uh, incorporating the deep learning modules so as for us to have a much more robust integration uh, in, in mitigation of the nonlinear impairments in the circuits and also uh, not only designing them by paper, but also putting them into the uh, systems that we built in the lab so that we are able to um, have a more realistic scenarios to tackle in the design. And certainly um, deep learning by its powerful features, we are able to, uh, in, uh, to build it for the network monitoring, network analytics, and also network anomaly detection. And of course, one key challenge we are interested in address in such anomaly detection and also attribution module would be, how are we able to design efficient deep learning models Modules so as not to use a lot of data, so as not to build a very, very complex um, neural network, and at the same time maintain the performance accuracy. So we have some um, early results. Certainly we hope we can build more, and also we hope we are able to uh, collaborate with both the industry uh, companies and also the other researchers in the acad academia. One more important aspect we feel uh, in the AI design will be how are we able to you know, uh, have this uh, integration and also cooperation between the learning modules at the cloud, at the server, and also the learning modules at the edge so that we are able to share the data efficiently. We are also able to share the knowledge efficiently so that we can enable a uh, flexible and accurate domain transformation, do, domain transfer when we deploy all these AI modules. So it remain still a number of years uh, research work for us to have this problem tackled. So finally, uh, one uh, question um, that is already uh, attracting a lot of uh, research interest which is the semantic communications in 6G. But interesting for us to consider also for semantic communications, are we expecting it to shift our design in 6G or it all becoming a reality beyond 6G? So if it is becoming a reality in 6G or beyond 6G, what shall we do in our research and also in our standardization aspects? So it's a food for thought. Uh, as our earlier presentation, you know, for 6G, we have uh, 10 years efforts um, up to 2030s for us to develop the technologies, standard, standardize the technologies, and also build the systems into a reality. So for that, we look forward to collaborating with you. Finally, um, just some information for our academic um, uh, friends. Um, at ESTAR, we offer scholarship and research attachment opportunities for international students at both the senior undergraduate level, master level, and also PhD level. So please do check out the website. And if you are interested, you are welcome to con uh, contact me as well. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I, I will be happy to address your questions thank you very and also much, hear your comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now the uh, floor is open to the for the question. Uh, are there any questions? From floor? No? How about? Yeah. So, Dr. Sumei? Yeah. Dr. Sumei, can you hear me? Yes. Dr. Sumei, can you hear yeah. me? Yes, okay. I can hear you. I have no a quick, quick question. Yes, so thank you. I'm very interested in the joint radar communication techno technology. Yes. Is that recognized as a 6G 
development development target? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Indeed, integrated sensing and communications uh, has been uh, recognized as one of the enabling technology in 6G. So there are a lot of uh, research activities going on. And then radar communication joint design is just one uh, special example uh, in the integrated sensing communications. So um, for that, as I shared, um, it is a promising technology in many applications. And at the same time, there will be a number of challenges for us to address. So including, uh, for example, interference mitigation, full duplex uh, system design, and also hopefully new waveform that is able to support uh, both simple communication system design and also very robust uh, radar sensing performance. Thank you very much. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, please. Uh, thank you for your interesting talk. And I'm very interested in the filter bank. And my question is, who is assumed to be arbitrate the wireless resources? Thank you very much for your uh, question. Uh, for this uh, filter bank, uh, may I um, ask for your kind help to repeat your question? Uh, you are asking for this uh, design, what is the? Uh, so I think that the uh, wireless resources limit is, so someone should be arbitrate the resources. Who is assumed to do arbitrations? All right, yeah. So um, thank you for your question. We, we are looking at actually uh, still going with the current resource allocation and also the spectrum regulation framework. For example, if we aggregate reg, uh, the uh, license spectrum under 5G, and that is going to be in the 3.6 gigahertz band. And at the same time, if we see some uh, available spectrum in the unlicensed bands, and in this particular case, we are looking at a Wi-Fi band of uh, 5.2 gigahertz. So we will be complying with the NRU, the NR in unlicensed spectrum operation framework, of course. But the design itself really give us this uh, simple circuit on one hand, and on the other hand, also this reconfigurability that we can um, move from one set of the non-contiguous carriers to another set of the non-contiguous uh, carriers. Uh, for example, from 5.2 gigahertz to 5.1 gigahertz or from 5.2 to 2.4 gigahertz band. Uh, so this will give us this flexibility and also we can configure them, reconfigure them on the fly. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, thank you very much. Unfortunately, time is almost up. So I have to finish the first, uh, second keynote speaker, Dr. Sumei. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to finish, of close this session now. Thank you very much.